In today's video, we're going to be talking about the case of Miller v. Bonta, where it stands right now, especially after the most recent iteration at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. For those of you who don't know, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to California's so-called assault weapons regulations. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about Miller. We're going to be talking about the underlying case. We're going to be talking about certain heroes in our community, like St. Benitez, the U.S. District Court Judge Roger T. Benitez down in San Diego. We're also going to be talking about an entirely different case, but one that is going to be crucial to us called Duncan v. Bonta. And that one has an even more storied history than Miller. So let's get right on into the weeds on this one. As many of you already know, after the Bruin decision, there was a challenge to California's various laws. Miller and Duncan both predate Bruin, and that's an important thing to understand. So originally, California ended up having a, a Magazine Control Act, for lack of a better way of describing it. That was a direct result of a proposition. And that proposition said that if you were in possession of a magazine capable of holding more than 10 rounds, you were now in violation of the law. That case went before Judge Benitez, and that was the case of Duncan v. at the time, Becerra. Now it's changed to Duncan v. Bonta. And that was the first time that many of us heard of Roger Benitez. He issued initially a preliminary injunction, then subsequently a final decision where he effectively said the law is unconstitutional. Keep in mind, this was pre-Bruin. The case goes up to the Ninth Circuit. There's a three-judge panel of the Ninth Circuit that agrees with, with Judge Benitez. It then goes to an en banc review, and the en banc review says, oh, no, 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 we can't have a state law being unconstitutional, so they overturn Benitez and the three-judge panel. This subsequently goes all the way to the Supreme Court. Right before they issue a decision on the uh, Duncan case, they issue Bruin, right? They come up with a new constitutional test. And they send Duncan all the way back to the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit says, well, we're going to send, since we have this new constitutional test, we're going to send it all the way back to Benitez to have a brand new trial, try to stall this as long as possible. Now, while all this is going on, there is an entirely different case than what the title of this video is about, and that's called Miller v. Bonta. This case has been fascinating to watch as it kind of changed and developed. So, Miller originally was a very limited case. As many of you know, California on AR-15s and other black scary rifles used to have a, a methodology for keeping it outside of an assault weapons classification of having a bullet button on the magazine release. It's essentially required that you use a bullet or a tool or something to press a little inset in the magazine release that would then jettison the magazine. Simply putting your finger against it would not be sufficient. This was construed as being a fixed magazine, and as a result, since it was a fixed magazine, it could have all the other evil features on the rifle and still not be construed as being a, an assault weapon. Well, in the Duncan decision, going back to Duncan again, in the Duncan decision, there was a brief period of time where people, as a result of Judge Benitez's original ruling, a one-week period of time, now somewhat euphemistically referred to as Freedom Week, where people could buy standard capacity magazines, and a lot of people did in California. Well, if you look at the assault weapons penal code, it lists all the things that make something an assault weapon, having a detachable magazine and having a collapsible stock and flash suppressors and pistol grips. But then it lists a bunch of secondary items. And one of the items is that if the firearm is a fixed magazine, 
capable of, has a fixed magazine, capable of holding more than 10 rounds than it is per se an assault weapon. Well, if someone was trying to be compliant with California law and they were to rig their AR-15 to now have a fixed magazine system, something beyond simply the bullet button, which was essentially by, by legislative fiat determined it not to be sufficient to create a fixed magazine. So they're this pathologically law-abiding citizen. They rig their AR-15 to have a, a, a fixed magazine system. And they take one of their now legally purchased pursuant to Freedom Week 30-round magazines and they stick it in their AR-15. They've just created an assault weapon. So Miller was a challenge to this little subset of the law. And, you know, basically the plaintiffs in Miller said, hey, listen, Benitez, you are the one who created this situation. Uh, just get rid of that one little code section. Well, Benitez, being Benitez, did what he does and he invalidated the entire law. Now, this ends up having the Bruin decision come back down, right? So now he reevaluates everything based on the history, text, and firearms regulatory traditions that we have here in the United States based on the Bruin test, and <coughs> surprise, surprise, finds the law to still be unconstitutional. This, the state appeals. It goes to a three-judge panel at the Ninth Circuit. That's where we are right now. Now, the three-judge panel, which is made up of a Clinton-appointed judge, a um, Barack Obama-appointed judge, and a Donald Trump-appointed judge. So, eh, the numbers aren't really working well on here, okay? This three-judge panel does something interesting. They listened to oral arguments last week during SHOT Show, and they come back and they say, listen, Miller as well as Duncan, have kind of come out at about the same time. They've reached the, the court at about the same time. Now, in Duncan, that case has bypassed the three-judge panel. There's all sorts of uh, shenanigans associated with that. They're now going directly to an en banc review, a, a larger group of jurists. An en banc panel is going to have more authority than a three-judge panel. Now, these cases are largely based on the same interpretation of Bruin. And, uh, you know, Benitez basically wrote the same thing for all intents and purposes. So, um, what they don't want to have happen, and there, there's logic in this, the three-judge panel in Miller doesn't want to come out and say, based on this reasoning, we find X only to find out that a month later, the en banc panel in Duncan comes out and says, you have to use this type of reasoning, right? Um, there's something called raised judicata, essentially the, 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 the argument's already been adjudicated. And you don't want to have disparative, you know, outcomes in cases. So the three judge panel said, hey, look, we got these guys over here that are going to be looking at interpreting Bruin as it relates to Duncan. We should be getting a decision at some point on that. So let's just suspend this for the time being, see what the en banc panel comes up with, and then we will, you know, either basically tailor our arguments to be consistent with the en banc panel. What does the bottom line of this mean? We have no decision, okay? Everything is essentially the way it's been up till now. Uh, there's been really no movement. We're going to have to wait and see how the Duncan decision ultimately comes down and how that then can subsequently be interpreted. I know it gets kind of wonky on this whole thing, uh, but it's just the way it is. So, uh, you know, there we go. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause this video for just a second. USCCA, which is sponsoring this video, um, they're doing a giveaway right now, and it is really cool. You're going to want to participate. 
It does end soon though, so you're gonna want to jump on it. If you go into the uh, description directly below this video, you can find out all about it and click the link. Um, all right, with that, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, as always, if you want to email me, uh, by all means do so at steven at artemishq.com. And as always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.